Thank you, Javier. This is the place where you can, it's okay to have an accident because you have about 50 people who can help you. And and thank you very much, Javier. A good, a good news is that we have had more people who have arrived and not many people have left the room. So and in a concern that we have here is that we've been told that we have to go faster because we have to recover part of the time that we've already, that behind, we're behind schedule. So now Sergio Lacambra is going to submit to you, present, present it on the IDB a tool for diagnose and, and, uh, and apply co governance and uh, policies as Javier has just been talking to us about. Thank you very much, Lizardo and uh, members of the board of the panel. I am here to present to you a special tool that is the result of a research process of the last couple of years by a group of experts in risk management and public policy. And the results of this uh, research will be ready for publication in September. And we will. Uh, but even though, so we, but, but we've asked for permission to share with you the main uh, aspects of the methodology that has been developed, and it's a tool that is called Index for Governance and Public Policy in Risk Management, IGOPP, which is basically a two-pronged tool, one for diagnose conditions of governance in a country in risk management. If a country has the conditions, the legal, institutional, and budgetary conditions in order to implement the different components of or processes of the risk management. Uh, it, in that regard, it is not a tool that would say, uh, that would measure the performance of the country in risk management, but in, in these other areas. Even though we do not measure the performance, we have noticed that countries that have gone through these processes of public policy reform recently, uh, we have noticed that by ch improving all these conditions, we have also observed a reduction in the risk and therefore a, an improvement in performance uh, in terms of risk management of this in this, these countries. And in addition to that, this is a tool for diagnose and we have a sort of checklist that will allow you to measure the advances of these processes of uh, reform, uh, uh, basically at the level of outcomes. And I'm going to show you the con concept framework, conceptual framework of the IGOPP. And, and I'm going to say that we can uh, tell the story in different ways. But here, what we are submitting is, first of all, the components that the ma risk management has. And they, you will have some that are um, elements that have to be done when it comes to risk management. First of all, identifying the risk, to know what the risks are in the territory, and to know a little bit about the infrastructure and the economic activities when, uh, faced with these uh, natural threats. And then uh, prevention and mitigation, that's risk reduction and everything uh, related to the disasters and emergencies on the preparedness and response levels and reconstruction levels, as well as the re response itself and reconstruction, and everything that is related to financial protection. Uh, with these uh, je management components uh, for risk, for risk management, in a way, getting back to what Javier was saying just a few moments ago, it has to do with public policy. And in the first place, the, the ins inserting the risk management in the political agenda of the government, it was being mentioned, and of the country, and formulation of the said uh, uh, public policy once you have the item on the agenda. And fi it, we were also talking about in uh, implementing the policy. And once it's designed, you implement it. And then you he was talking about uh, assessment. And so once you have uh, executed the policy, you, have, you assess and you see if it has worked, what has worked, what has not, et cetera, et cetera. 
so these phases will be reconverted a, as a dim dimension that is going to be crossing all of the other elements. And so we have a dimension that is called definition of sectorial responsibilities that is to define in each of the ministries or sectors that have to do with the risk management. If there is a definition through specific norms for risk management or others uh, that are active in the system, and if these responsibilities of the sector with regulation to the other components of risk management are not defined in this within this context and the, likewise it is important to define responsibilities of the organization or organisms the entities that are working on here entities like local governments or regional governments in the regu regulatory framework if they actually have a responsibilities defined of the for these units of the territory with regard to each of the processes of the risk management process complementing these types of definitions we are also looking for uh, the legal framework, whether or not in the in it, there is a de definition of responsibilities for coordination and articulation with other public policies that have to do with the risk management, for example, policy f uh, for hyd hydric resources, uh, climate change, or territorial or management, and urban development, and so on and so forth. And so through these elements we try to see whether in this legal institutional and budgetary framework if there is a clear definition of all of these responsibilities that i've just mentioned for each one of the components of the risk of the management of risk it also on the level of uh, pu public policy implementation we're looking for evidences in uh, in the different sectors uh, public companies and units of uh, territories if the housing sector, for instance, is implementing actions that ha can identify the, ri in, uh, the, for the risk or management or redu reduction or preparedness, if, and if the main uh, suppliers, of, uh, providers of uh, basic uh, services in, are also including in the execution of the daily tasks all these risk uh, concepts. And uh, in assessing the policies, we are looking to find whether or not this framework in, on a national level has included uh, mechan control mechanisms and uh, accountability and citizen participation in the whole risk management uh, uh, issue. And with these phases of uh, public policy, basically what we have is a matrix that has the components of identifying reduction of, uh, of, of um, risk, preparedness uh, f to, for responding, planning, rec recovery, and financial protection. And likewise, all of the other items that have nothing not to do just exclusively with risk management, but that are very important to be able to promote a policy, an integral policy for risk management. And we see that within the framework, the general framework of governability, governance. And so we have a matrix here that has all these cross sections with the, of elements, different element, elements. And here, the matrix, as you can see on the screen, in each one of these cells that are cross section of the phases of the policy, public policy, and the different elements, you can find the different indicators. And so, for example, this matrix has a 241 indicators that are binary. In other words, that are uh, you, you need to respond yes or no, yes, no questions. And the, need, the country needs to have certain legal frameworks, uh, certain norms, certain budgets, and certain control mechanisms, yes or no. And as I'm saying, these are questions and that in order to comply, for compliance with each one of these indicators, there is, you need to have something verifiable that will demonstrate, in fact, that the country does comply with all of these indicators. And we are now going to give you some examples. And this means 241 indicators. Well, in such a short time that well, I can't do this, show everybody everything. But uh, I've shown you just a couple of them. I've selected some so that you can see the kind of indicators that are part of this index. And so, and in this presentation, I am uh, feeling uh, I'm going to use the 11 countries of the region in 
and the countries that you that you see on the screen that are in gray are countries where we haven't applied anything. So it's that not that they're not compliant, but the thing is that we haven't applied this in any of these countries. In Brazil, for instance, by Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, we haven't really worked. Even Ecuador, either we neither have we done anything here. So up until now, we have uh, uh, we have been able to obtain verifiable information, and those are the two countries that are in green, or the ones that are in green. Okay, so green color, Mexico and Colombia, for one. <coughs> And so an indicator that is within the cell of governance and and the direction of the, the policy of risk management and other policies as main instruments of the country is, has this indicator. It's called the National Development Plan, which is the main document of the country, establishes objectives, goals, or indicators in the management of and risk disaster risk management. Another indicator, if we go to the general framework of for governance, um, asks, well, is there a, a fund or a mechanism that is equal to the activities for risk management? And in other words, prevention, mitigation, and preparedness. Another indicator, is there a norm that establishes mandatory uh, application, uh, mandatory uh, uh, or threats in the cities? And the, in order to answer affirmatively, there's got to be a verifiable document, legal document of the country that will support this answer. And then is there an integration of the cha climate change in the educational curricula, at least on elementary levels or secondary levels? Is there at least one norm, a national norm for security or a code to, for a design that is sis resist, seismic, earthquake resistant for public and private uh, constructions? Is there any norm that will uh, order to uh, have a special uh, implementation in, in projects? And some countries do have this indicator and comply with this indicator. And if you enter into the area of other indicators that are measuring so, uh, providers, uh, provider companies, the one that is f providing water uh, supply, for instance, if this company has at least one or two projects that include the risk reduction in the last five years, if they have a plan for risk reduction. The national entity for control and here, this is the public policy of for assessment. Is the national entity control, usually the controller, has at least done one verification or assessment on the uh, fulfillment of actions, compliance of actions in the last few years. And there are several people, and uh, people for each one of the components. Uh, there are mechanisms for citizen participation in the processes of reco recovery, post-disaster recovery with are special, and there must be some kind of norms that will explain the mechanisms for the civil society to participate in the post-disaster uh, moment. And there are several indicators. At the end, the, the index does uh, measure between 0 and 100, and these 241 indicators, if they are all complete and they're compliant, then you would give it a 100% IGOP um, score. And this is an index that allows you to see how a country is, the state of a country in these conditions, juridical, uh, institutional, and budgetary, and it allows you to see the evolution of a country in compliance with these conditions. Here we have an example of a country in the region. I'm not going to say who or which country, but you'll know in October, you will know about what country it is. But in 2000, before uh, going through a very important reform process, had one over 100. It now, in, in, in compliance with these indicators, and after this measurement and after this reform, it has uh, reached 53 level of compliance. And there you see a big difference uh, score at the IGOP. -P. And uh, in addition to all these uh, scores, we have other values per component, uh, per uh, risk management component. And in other words, we know a little bit about how each country is and where it is at in the general governance uh, framework of risk reduction or preparedness and planning and recovery and, and financial protection. In this example, that is the same one that we used to have 
uh, uh, something very uh, common happens in this, in, like in the region in general, which is the rec recovery shows the lowest level of recovery, the one that is on uh, in mauve, uh, violet there, light lila. Uh, the it doesn't only evaluate, if, uh, allow for a comparison between commons, components, but also to see the applications uh, amongst the different countries. If you want to improve on the compliance indicators, the index can allow allows you to look for best practices to the countries that have complied in a better way. So in this case, you have the, you have that. The column number 13 in orange that says identifying risk, this country has a good performance, which is 48 over 100. <coughs> in governance um, conditions, and, and, and you can compare on the graph. And also, when things, uh, when you analyze the components for risk management, when you look at each country and then you analyze inside those components. On, at the level of policy phases and identifying risk, then some have a better articulation and with the policy and defin defining sect uh, sectorial responsibilities or defining territorial responsibilities or evidences for implementation. But at the level of control, uh, this the second country, which globally was in a bad uh, bad status or state. Well, it's better off than the other one because the, so much so that the first country can actually <laughs> learn from the countries by using these mechanisms for control, uh, accountability, and participation. No. Very well. I would like to conclude just telling you that this is a tool which, as a checklist, uh, is an instrument uh, that uh, serves uh, for those countries who want to tackle processes of uh, public policy reform and risk management, those countries uh, that are not satisfied uh, with uh, their regulatory framework, institutional and budgetary framework, and which want to have a guideline about uh, what to change in order to have a framework that is aligned uh, with best international practices at the legal, uh, institutional, and budgetary framework. Now, this is a tool that will help you along the process. This is linked to other indicators that the uh, in, uh, IDB has developed. And of course, you can get more information in this link, which is so easily to remember, so easily remembered. So from October onwards, you will have available the results of applicating this index, the details on the methodology and uh, material, support material for the 11 countries of the region. Thank you very much.